Bible speaker last week in the, the <laughs> harvest. Uh, this was written after a flood, and I think it was 2011, Hurricane Irene. It's amazing how after every tragedy, every crisis, somehow as, as humans we get through it, through faith and through helping each other and whatever the experience we get through it. So. Hurricane Irene did. I didn't do much. I sat in a lazy boy and watched it on TV. Um, but they had a fundraiser to raise uh, money for the people who were in the flood. Yeah. So this is my contribution. Literally written from a lazy boy, my father in law. From the luxury of a lazy boy, staring at a dock water screen, I watch the power of nature watch over my neighbors and me. through the back door through a world of verdant green clouds as thick as wet cement holding a thousand miles of rain the harvest is plentiful the gatherers are few Acres of water where there was corn gathered before the storm. Clusson Brook is raging like a breakless freight train, pulling down all the stages. Six generations of soil washed down the deer field today, leaving behind trap rock and silt and gravel. So there'll be no third cut of hay. The harvest is plentiful. The gatherer. Dora Trunk one time. Dora Trunk you knows when to head. He said, we just wait, look at the sky. He said, what are you looking for? He said, as long as it's coming from the northwest, we'll be okay. Northwest sky brings promise. sunny blue to restore all the balance that we both knew. We cast our seeds of hope 
onto the human tide. What you give is what you receive when it flows back from the other side. You can try this with me. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. The gatherers are here. The gatherers are here. Our first scripture is from Revelation 1, 4b to 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faith, faithful witness and the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even the, those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The second reading is from John 18, 33 through 37. When Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and your chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilates asked him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this is this I was born, and for this I came into the world to t testify to truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Please bless these holy words. During a recent ecumenical gathering, the secretary rushed into the meeting shouting, the building is on fire. And so the Methodist immediately gathered in the corner, got out their book of discipline to decide who would respond. The Baptist tried to figure out how to get the water from the baptismal font to the fire. The Quakers quietly waited for the discernment of the Holy Spirit. The Lutherans posted notice on the door declaring 99 ways to quench the flames. Uh, the Roman Catholics asked the priest to check with the hierarchical authorities to determine what to do. The Congregationalists organized a congregational vote and couldn't come to consensus about how to put out the fire. The Fundamentalists proclaimed it's the vengeance of God, don't do anything. The Episcopalians formed a procession and marched out. The Christian scientists consulted the writings of Mary Baker Eddy to see if she'd ever dealt with fire in the church. 
and the secretary got the fire extinguisher and put the fire out. <laughs> we may all have a different way to respond to the fire in a building, but we all know we got to figure it out. And we got to put out the fire of violence and conflict that afflicts us today. We have to figure out how to live in peace over the whole earth. And it's ironic that we're more able to live in peace if we're not afraid. You know, if we feel secure, we don't feel like we're going to be attacked, we're not afraid, then we're more able to live in peace. And we're less afraid if we're already living in peace. You know, it's kind of this circle that grows when it connects to itself. So if we can put aside fear, if we're, not, if we're able to not escalate and if we can keep doing it and others keep doing it, then peace will grow and it will continue to grow until it covers the earth and vice versa. If we react in fear, if we overreact to whatever happens and those we oppose react in fear and overreact, then we keep escalating. And then violence continues to grow and lives forever and ever. So today is Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. And it reminds us that we don't have to be afraid, that ultimately our security is in Christ and Christ isn't going to fail us and we know how this is going to end. And whether it's an argument that we have in our relationships that we're trying not to overreact to or something that goes in, on in our communities or something that's going on in the world, we have to figure out how to have a sense of peace so that wisdom is what leads us as we respond. It says in Ephesians, the way that we do it is if we're rooted and grounded in love, we have the power to comprehend with all the saints, saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and we come to know the love of, call, of Christ with a knowledge that surpasses all others. So the first thing you notice in the scripture, if you were reading it up there or reading it in your Bibles, is that Jesus' reign isn't a political reign. That he rejects his disciples' call to be a government and to be part of the government. He says to Pilate, if I were going to be king then my followers would be fighting. And they would have fought you and they wouldn't have handed me over to you. But I came willingly. I prevented them from fighting. Because he says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. He says it over and over and over again, but it's, it's so hard to realize what those statements made almost 2,000 years ago, what they really mean in our lives. Christ the King Sunday or the reign of Christ, it doesn't mean that Christians are supposed to forcibly convert the whole world. Jesus never did that. Um, I truly mourn the death of John Allen Chow. Did you read about him in the paper? The young man who tried to bring Christianity to the Sentinel Island, uh, part of the territory of India. Um, he went there even though it was prohibited by Indian law, and evidently he was killed while he was doing it. And my heart goes out to his family. I mean, they've already said, we forgive the people who took his life, and we forgive the seven people who helped him get to the island. And yet I think he may have missed the point. He had noble intentions to spread the truth of his faith, but if he'd succeeded, it could have caused devastating catastrophe that he didn't mean to bring, like diseases to people who have been isolated for their whole existence and for generations. And they have no immunity to anything that we might bring to them. So it would have taken their lives. Or it could have caused catastrophe because their whole way of life may have been destroyed. And so 
this enterprise in Christ's name is not about forcing our religion on others, but it's about something else, something that's more eternal and something that is more powerful than that. It's about touching and living in a reality that it is above, behind, before, between, and beyond what we see, hear, taste, and smell. It's a reality we attune to in our dreams or visions, a reality we apprehend in the rustle of the wind or the singing of the birds, in the sacrament of communion, or as John said in his song, you know, when we're a harvest of people, and we come together for good and we stand together in the face of disaster and know that we have the seeds of hope that will grow into something great and beautiful. And it seems like that this is hidden behind a curtain. It's so ephemeral. But once we have experienced it and seen it and known it, it comes back to us again and again. And we find when we are still that our God, who is the true God, is with us. That's the very story of our faith, the story of people from the time of the Israelite people to today, finding God right in their midst. And that's the reality that leads us and guides us, that Jesus was pointing to when he lived and when he died. And that's what God has been trying to open to us through the prophets and the priests, that's what the book of Ephesians is all about when it talks about Christ's universal power. It says, Christ sits in heavenly places far above all rule and authority and above every name that is named. And God put everything under Christ's feet. And we're connected to Christ and Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. And how does that happen? When we're rooted and grounded in love, we have the power with all the saints to comprehend what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to come to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge. That's what it is that surpasses all knowledge, the love of Christ and being rooted and grounded in love. So that we know the reign of God in our daily lives when we practice love every day. We say this over and over again, but it's, it's so hard to do. We proclaim our allegiance to the realm of Christ when we discover how to love our enemies, how to respond instead of in fear with a sense of grace. What does it mean for us? It means if we fu fully and truly believe that Christ's love is the ultimate power, that we're freed from the hold and the fear of earthly powers, of hate and domination. And we can amass, instead of worldly power, worldly, worldly power, we amass worldly compassion. And we can open the door to others, not by coercion, but by demonstration of that love and by invitation of that love. And that has been shown, that way has been shown so many times. The Book of Joy, I've referred to it before, was written by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who's an icon in the Buddhist faith, and Archbishop Bishop Desmond Tutu, who is a giant in the Christian faith. And they wrote this book together because they wanted to point out all the ways that Buddhism and Christianity share a common understanding of the path of joy and love in our lives. And they are both great spiritual leaders of their own traditions, Buddhism and Christianity. And they call upon those traditions, each of them. But they're trying to say that the core beliefs of the world's greatest religions are always concerned with all of humanity. And there's some commonness in that core. And they're asking us to discover what that is. And what's so interesting was that in this encounter, Desmond Tutu practiced the meditation that he was taught, which is a Buddhist practice by the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama received Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ, from the hand of Bishop Desmond Tutu. And it's a moment that we can look to to try to understand how to live in this world. 
And it happens in other ways all around us. Recently, hundreds of students at University of Michigan formed a circle of prayer around their Muslim classmates so they could pray safely because there was a woman who had been wearing a headscarf and a man came up to her and said if she didn't take it off, he was going to light her on fire. And so then she was terrified to practice her faith, which mandates praying five times a day. And so the student association said, what can we do? And Christians and Jews and Muslims came together. And the Muslims came together that night for their time of prayer, the fifth time of the day. And the Christians and Jews surrounded them and just filled the campus that evening. Hundreds and hundreds of people came out for prayer and for showing their support. And the Muslim chaplain said he was so touched and moved by the power of that. So we are rooted and grounded in love. And when Christ reigns in our hearts, that's what it means, that we're rooted and grounded in love. And we comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. And we come to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge. And this love and commitment to a common humanity goes both ways. According to the BBC, a bus was ambushed by Al-Shabaab terrorists in Kenya. You may remember Al-Shabaab. They're the ones that kidnapped 200 Christian girls a few years ago. And we prayed in worship by name for each of them that they would be returned. And some of them have been and some of them have never been returned. And they wreak terror wherever they go. And the bus had Christians and Muslims aboard. And a group of Muslim women on that bus pulled out their extra shawls and quickly covered the heads of the Christian women. And they said to Al-Shabaab when they came onto the bus, if you're going to kill anyone, kill all of us, because you're not going to know the difference between Christian and Muslim. Because we stand together as one against your terror and your violence. And guess what? These women saved the lives of everyone on that bus. They got off the bus and they left them alone. So, what does that call us to do? It calls us to be true to our faith and live our faith and to try to understand and follow Jesus and to practice our Christian faith and to know that the power of our faith is not an earthly power that we amassed so that we can be lords over others, but the power of our faith is in a vulnerable baby born to an oppressed people. The power of our faith is being rooted and grounded in love so we can comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and we can come to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge. Amen.